Hi, Mark here from AmericanAeration.com and in this video I want to go over windmill pond aeration, the pros and cons of wind-driven aerators. You know, alternative energy pond aeration is gaining a lot of attention and a lot of interest in recent years and for good reason. It provides a very viable way to aerate a pond even if you have no power nearby. And so we want to explore both windmill and solar but in this video, we'll concentrate on windmills and talk about some of the benefits and some of the potential drawbacks of working with a wind-driven aerator. So first, what about the pros? Well, if budget is a major factor for you, then there's no question that a windmill aerator is more affordable than a solar aerator would be. And there are two types of solars, by the way. There's direct drive which would work during daylight hours only and then there's full-time or mostly full-time with a battery backup feature. Now in comparison a windmill aerator is around 50 percent or so less expensive than a direct drive solar system and possibly four to five times less expensive than a solar aerator with a battery backup so there's no question that they provide a more affordable way to get into a good aeration system. They also have the benefit of potentially working at night. Now, a direct drive solar, which is what we see the most interest in, because they are at least in a reasonable price range, they're only going to work during the daylight hours. So overnight, they're typically not going to produce any air. And so a windmill, as long as you have a breeze, will be producing air no matter whether it's daytime or nighttime. So to me, that's a good benefit. You'll get good air production out of a windmill aerator for one to two diffusers with suitable winds. And this provides coverage probably for something in the neighborhood of a quarter to a half acre to a one acre pond, maybe a little larger. But that's about the range that you're going to find the most suitable in. Now, if you have a larger pond than that, let's say a couple acres, you could use several windmills around the perimeter and that would work too. They're also good for shallow ponds. Anything less than 10 to 12 feet is probably pretty workable with the windmill aerator and, uh, and they do a good job in those kind of types of settings. If they're maintained and kept in good condition, typically they will be very quiet in operation and compared to a powered aeration system, they tend to be more, more quiet. So that's a good, um, good benefit. In terms of the drawbacks that we found with windmill aerators, they are more complicated in their construction. You do have to, of course, put the base together, which is much like an erector set. You also have to mount the fan and the motor and the, the back fin onto this platform. And so they take a bit more time and a bit more work to get them up and running. Of course, the biggest thing to me, if there were a drawback, to a windmill aerator is their inconsistent operation. They have to have wind to work. And so much of this depends on your particular area that it's hard to say whether it's a good idea or the best option for someone in a particular setting. Only you would know that in terms of your, your weather conditions and the environment around the pond. And so just know that you're going to have to have wind to make this work. And the more consistent the wind or breezes, the better off you'll be. We don't find that windmill aerators work that great in deeper water because of the type of compressors they use, which are usually diaphragm based or bellows based. They will have certain limits on how much they can handle. If you put a diffuser in too deep of water, you'll wear out the diaphragms prematurely, just as you would with a linear compressor. This is a powered type of a compressor that would also use diaphragms and we typically don't use those in very deep water at all. I would say most windmill aerators should be used probably in about a 10 to 12 foot depth max and anything beyond that. Well check with the manufacturer to make sure what they recommend for an operational depth rating. I would advise you not to push it up to the maximum depth capability of the system just to keep maintenance to a reasonable level. Speaking of maintenance, you will likely see a bit of that involvement here because you have bearings on the fan itself. All turbines have bearings and all turbines require maintenance and greasing, things like that. Uh, we've had some customers over the years, they didn't get the windmills from us, but they've commented that they've had some blowovers and some other damage that have come up 
um, from storms that rolled through and uh, so maintenance for them was a little more involved but uh, typically it's nothing that you can't handle but just understand that maintenance to keep this thing in good operational order will be required and those bearings are probably one of the big things to keep an eye on. Compressor life may also be shorter again because they're using diaphragm based uh, compressors, these could require updating more frequently than what you would typically see used in our preferred solar aeration system, which is a rock and piston driven pump. So that's something to keep in mind. Is a windmill pond aerator right for you? Well, a lot depends on your specific circumstances. There's no question about that. First question, what is your budget? If you're on a tight budget, then yes, a windmill aerator may be the way to go. And I have the opinion that any aeration is better than no aeration in a pond. It will always be helpful. How consistent it may be, of course, that's going to depend on the winds and the breezes that you get near the pond. If you're typically going to have a lot of still days, especially in the hot summer days uh, or, or of midsummer, that's a tough condition. Uh, if you have no wind, you will get no air, and that's no good on a hot day. How deep is your pond? That's another consideration. Anything deeper than 10 to 12 feet, I'm not sure that a windmill aerator is the best choice for you, but again, check with the manufacturer to make sure that you know how deep an aerator will run. Also, the size of your pond will matter. If you can run one to two diffusers and cover the whole pond, no question, it may be a good consideration. But if it's much bigger than that, then typically the solar aerators in a single unit will power more diffusers and could be a better choice. Or you could go with multiple windmill systems each powering one or two diffusers and probably get reasonable performance out of that. And finally, how mechanically inclined are you? If you're not looking to be involved with maintenance to some degree, a windmill aerator may not be the best choice for you, but the work and the maintenance is relatively easy to do. It's just something that has to be done to keep the aerator working in good order. So I'd be curious and interested to find out if you have any experience with windmill aerators. If you do, Leave a comment below this video on YouTube. Love to hear whether you've had good luck and are happy with windmill aerators or if you've had some maybe bad luck and, and poor experiences. We want to hear all about it. So look forward to you sharing that information with us and with everybody that stops by here. And if you have any questions on pond aeration in general, windmill, solar, whatever, doesn't matter, be sure to get with us at AmericanAeration.com. We'll be happy to help and thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a good day wherever you are.